All right, guys, so give me a second. I apologize. Bear with me a moment. Give me a second. Give me a second. Just got to do a little change up here. I know some of those of you that are on YouTube um, are seeing me, but people on Painting with Jesse on Facebook are not. So I just, I'm trying to fix that real quick. Bear with me a moment. All right. That should do the trick. Go live now. There we go. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> All right, took me a moment there. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, like I said, I was going live to the YouTube channel, but not to the Facebook page. So there we are. Fantastic. All right, everyone, hope you're all doing amazingly today. I know I am, and I am happy and ready. Whoops, let me lower my music a little bit, a little loud here. I got some music playing in the background, some copyright-free music. So hopefully that enhances our little session today but anyway if somebody could give me a sound check let's start with that somebody let me know in the comments that you can hear me that would be fantastic i don't see any comments just yet always like to start with a good sound check because you never know whoops whoops not a virtual background we don't want to do that okay things are looking good on my end let's see where are the comments over here on my facebook page Nothing yet, nothing yet. Almost there, folks. Give me a second. Put that on. Facebook doesn't always make it easy to, uh, to jump on and do this. Sometimes it's a little glitchy. Sometimes it's user error. I'll definitely uh, accept that. One last little thing here. One more thing, everybody. There we go. I don't see him. There we go. Sherry, thank you so much. What's happening, Angie? There we go. Now I'm seeing the comments. So thank you all for being patient with me. Donna says, sounds good. All right, everyone. So again, welcome to today's, this is part one of our two-day workshop. Part two will be tomorrow. Okay, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific. If you don't get a chance to jump on here and watch these live, you can catch the recordings. They're both going to be recorded. They're both being recorded and then will be available immediately after the live session is done. You can catch these here on Facebook on the Painting with Jesse page or on the Painting with Jesse YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, we're going to have a good time today. It's a nice and easy beginner friendly workshop that we're going to be doing today. We've got the little painting here to the side, uh, to the side of me in just a moment. We'll talk about the supplies, real basic supplies, real basic everything. I want you guys to understand, especially if you're new to painting, that you're going to create something a little, every one of us, every one of us painting today is going to be creating something a little bit different. Okay, that's part of how this works. Your painting supplies, Everything from the types of, types of paints that you're using to the brushes to the canvas or uh, maybe you're painting on paper. You could be painting on, on a canvas board. All of those things will create slightly different uh, end results. Okay, Even if we were all using the exact same supplies, we would all still end up with something a little different or in some cases drastically different. That is A-OK, -okay, perfectly fine, perfectly normal. So I don't want you guys stressing about trying to recreate an exact version of either the original or of the one that I'm going to be doing today. So my goal is to walk you step by step, of course, you're recreating this piece over here, uh, but don't stress too much on all the little tiny details. In the end, the goal is to create something that looks somewhat like this, but rule number one is to have fun. Everything else is kind of you know, uh, secondary. So have fun, enjoy the process. You'll learn something no matter what. If you're, especially if you're newer to painting, you'll be learning, you'll be learning as you go. Uh, but the first thing I want to say is that please don't stress out, enjoy the session, have a little fun with it. And, you know, you'll, you'll end up typically, typically, typically relaxing a little bit. If you have that in mind where you're going to be coming in 
and just painting for the fun of it. Uh, of course, you want you're you're hoping to create something, something fun, something pretty. But again, that should be a secondary thing. Come in, enjoy it, have fun. The more relaxed you are, typically the better your results are in the end. Okay, at least that's been my experience. I've been teaching people to paint for about about five years now. Two of which, two and a half of which, have been uh, here on the internet. So uh, on Facebook mainly and on YouTube. So my experience has been that if you relax a little bit, you typically end up you know, having a little bit more fun. What's happening, Cindy? I'm just going to say hello to a few people that are saying hi in the comments. Cindy Lambie from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. You will. You will definitely be able to watch this uh, on, uh, on the replay. Okay, There's a recording of this uh, happening at the moment. When it's all over, you'll be able to watch uh, this painting uh, at your leisure. Okay? So, and if folks, if you... If you could, please let us know where you're joining in from. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're a first timer to the painting with Jesse Page, please let, please let us know in the comments. Let us know who you're painting with. You know, if you're painting by yourself, or you're painting with a group of people. Fantastic. We'd love to. We'd love to say hello you, to you in the comments. And feel free to interact with each other. This is about having fun. You see somebody's comment, you have a question or something, and you know the answer to it. Especially those of you that have been painting with me for a while, jump on and you know say hello, answer questions. You know, just uh, post. Feel free to post comments in the uh, in the comment section. Okay. And Marie, what's happening from Ontario, Canada? Mary Moreno says joining from Oceanside, California. Fantastic, Mary. You're about 45 minutes to actually more like an hour away from about with traffic in California. Things are you know sometimes a little crazy. But all right, all right. Let's talk about the supplies that I'm going to be using. Uh, these are just suggested supplies. You can use whatever you've got. Okay, now real quick before I get into that, the goal for today, remember we're doing this in two parts. Today's part one, we're going to be painting for approximately an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half. We're going to be taking our time with this. Our goal today is you're going to end up with something like this. Okay, this is about the end result for today's session. We're going to paint in the sky, we're going to paint in the wispy clouds, and we're going to paint in the water. Now the water isn't complete down in this example we're going to add a few more little touches but this is generally what you're going to have at the end of today's session there's no beach down here no sand you don't have anything down here that comes tomorrow okay so again just to give you guys um you know an idea as to where we're going to be at the end of today's session this is what you're going to have approximately okay now i'm painting on an eight by ten inch canvas let me put this extra canvas over to the side eight by ten inch canvas Okay, now before I forget, let me change the view on my screen so that you see less of me and more of the painting, uh, what we're going to be working on. Okay, so let me make a little adjustment here. What's happening, Katya? I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Katya Sanchez from Beeville, Texas. Welcome, welcome to the, to the group today. So uh, 8 by 10 inch canvas is what I'm going to be using, fairly so, uh, small piece okay keeping it nice and simple now as far as today's colors you only need a blue okay some kind of blue a white and a green we're gonna add a little bit of green in the water just a little tiny bit now these are paints these are my liquitex liquitex basics acrylic paint of course we're painting with acrylic some of you might change it up and do watercolors i know some of you guys like to do that and that's perfectly fine but liquitex it's a good brand to start with. It has really good flow, uh, really rich colors. So, but again, use whatever brand of, of uh, acrylic paints that you've got. But if you're interested in, you know, maybe finding a good starter uh, set of paints, the acrylics, Liquitex, sorry, the Liquitex Basics are really good. So those are the three colors that we're going to be using today. Now, as far as the colors that we'll be using tomorrow, and I think I kind of, Put them over to the side here, but we were, you're going to need some kind of brown. You're going to need a little bit, little bit of a yellow. Of course, the green that I just talked about. You're going to need some black, and I've moved my paints out of the way that I wasn't going to be using. So it'll be for tomorrow. On top of the three colors that I've already showed you, you're going to need some, some yellow, some type of brown, uh, some black. Mainly, the birds will have a little bit of black. The palm trees also have a little bit of uh, black mixed into them. And then, of course, if you're going to be adding little flowers in your in your shrubbery, 
I used pink and red and then a little bit of yellow here and there. So those are the colors for tomorrow. Okay, as far as the brushes, I'm only using four brushes today. Real easy, four brushes. Give me a second while I grab a paper towel here. Four brushes. I'm going to be using a large, a large-ish brush. This is a one-inch flat brush. I'm going to be using th this to paint the background mainly. Okay, so one-inch flat brush. These are synthetic bristle brushes. They're called um, Golden Taclon. These are the Golden Taclon type. Most of these four, I think maybe all four, are from the Fine Touch, a brand that you can pick up uh, at Hobby Lobby. So here's a half-inch flat brush. Okay, we'll be doing the water maybe, the, the beach. Actually, for the water, we'll see. But the beach for sure in the half-inch half uh, flat brush. These are also, even though they're big, broad brushes, uh, as long as they're able to, you can make them nice and thin, these are nice for making skinny things too. Okay, these aren't just for painting big parts. You can make little skinny lines with these. Okay, so half inch. Then I have a number four flat. This is this is just a relatively small little square brush, kind of same thing. I'll be using this for the details in the water. Actually, I'll be using this for quite a bit of the water. Maybe some of the details in the sand, some of the shrubbery, you know, uh, likely to be using this for the trunks of those palm trees. Okay. And then one more brush, my little brush. This is a number two flat, little flat brush. It's not a pointy brush, although if you have a little pointy brush, like a round number zero or a liner a number zero, those are good to use too. But I wanted to keep things simple today to just four brushes, okay? Nothing fancy, so don't stress. Use what you've got. These are just suggested. As long as you've got something similar, you're good to go. Okay, so those are the brushes. Of course, I've got a water cup, a little rinse cup in here with some water. I keep my brushes in there in between steps. So I'm going to put this over to the side. Uh, paper towels. You always want to have a paper towel roll. Okay, I'm going to be using a uh, foam plate, styrofoam plate for my palette. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start. We're going to put in some colors. I'm going to start with a light blue or my blue and some white, and I'm going to make some light blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and Put out my, my blue right on that canvas or on my palette, my paper palette. Then I'm also going to be putting in some white. I'll show you my palette here in a second. So don't uh, don't worry too much about, I'm just describing this. I will be demonstrating what it looks like. I'm also going to, going to go ahead and put down some green on my palette. Okay, and in a moment, I'm going to turn up my music just a little bit. It's the first time I've used music in a long time in my live streams. Hopefully things go well. If it gets a little too loud, let me know and I'll be happy to turn it down. Okay. So here's my palette. Okay. That's what we're going to be starting with. I probably need, you know what, I'm going to uh, put out a bit more white because I know for sure I'm going to be needing more white than that. We're going to, we're going to start with the background first. Okay. The sky is what we're going to start with. Before we get started and we're about to, we're about to hit the go button. Just let me look at the comments really quickly. And say, say hello to some of you. Crystal Winkler, what's happening all the way out in Lorain, Ohio? Happy to be here, and I'm happy that you're here too. Okay, Angie, Burnt Umber is perfectly fine. Either one is fine. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, uh, blue for your ultramarine blue, that's fine. Ultra, I think you meant to write ultramarine, I'm not sure. But those are all perfectly fine, okay? Uh, sounds good, Sherry, sounds good. Hi, Julie. Julie Rangel, how's it going? And then Robin Scott says, hi, Jesse, I'm here, but can't stay. We'll catch up. I'm painting the hope tree. We'll send you a picture when I'm finished. Fantastic, Robin. That was a fun session to do, the hope tree. If any of you missed that, the recording's still available. I, I said I was going to take it off of the uh, painting with Jesse library, but it's still there. And that was a really fun painting to do. It was a painting session that we did in May. Uh, it was a painting that we were using to raise brain tumor awareness. Okay, May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month. So in May, we did the Hope Tree in honor of brain tumor awareness. It was a pretty fun event. So big one inch flat brush for me is what I'm gonna be starting with. Okay, I got my white and I got my blue. For this first step, those are the only colors I'm going to be mixing. Be mixing before I start. I'm gonna dip my brush right in my water cup. I'm gonna do this, pick up some of that water I'm going to bring it over and I'll show you what I'm doing in a second. 
I bring some few drops of water and I'm going to put them on my plate like this. Now, my water is a, a little bit messy because I used it a little while ago to practice a little bit for today's session. So I've got some color in it. But if it's clear water, that's actually more ideal. But I'm going to grab some of that white. I'm going to mix it all together. Okay. So a little bit of watered down white is what I've got at the moment. Probably a little too liquidy. But that's okay. We're going to work through that. Then we're going to grab a little bit of blue now. What I'm, what I'm creating is a really pretty light blue. It's a sky blue. Now, how light? It all depends on your taste. If you want it a little darker, you add a little bit more blue. If you want it a little bit brighter or, or a little bit lighter, then you add more white. Okay, now I'm not using my entire plate. I want to keep this kind of concentrated in a little area down here. Okay, if you're, if you're new, folks, again, if you're new to painting, maybe you're just watching, which is also a good idea. Sometimes you want to watch first, and then uh, second time around, you paint with the session. Sometimes that's easier to do. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm wiggling the camera, I'm accidentally hitting it. I'm a little too close to it, so I'm hitting it, causing it to shake a little bit. Okay, but again, just a real pretty light blue. I need to go a little bit darker than that. I want it a little closer to my original. Now, I'm not trying to match my original exactly. That's not my goal here. But I do want to get nice and close to it. So one thing about acrylic paint is that it will dry a little bit darker. Okay, so really quickly two-thirds down from my canvas or a third of the way up. Again, I'm using an 8 by 10 inch canvas. I'm going to go and just create my horizon line. That's about where my water is going to sit. But from there, I'm going to work my way upwards. Okay, now this color is going to be, looks like going to be a little darker than my original, and that's okay. Again, I'm not trying to get an exact match to the original. I just want close. Close is good. Oh, and I forgot to put my phone on silent, on uh, silent mode. So if it rings or vibrates, I do apologize about that. There's lots of little steps to setting up for a live feed. And even if I take three hours to set up, there's usually something that I miss. Okay, so here we go. There's my background. And I'm using these long horizontal brush strokes. I'm going back and forth, back and forth. I just want good coverage. I want to cover up all of the canvas. Now, adding a little bit of water to the paint like I did at the beginning makes the paint a little bit more, gives it more flow. Uh, it does thin it out a little bit. So sometimes by doing that, it can make it harder to cover your entire background. Sometimes you see a little bit of that white peeking through. So it's about finding a balance. Okay. And a lot of it will depend on the surface that you're painting on and on the type of paint that you're using. Okay, but all right, I'm going to take a pause here while you guys are catching up. Again, I just went about a third of the way down. Okay, now I'm not going to do much layering in my sky. This first layer is all I'm going to do. I don't need much else. Let me give you guys a close-up of my original so you guys can kind of get a, an idea. Okay, this is, uh, the sky here was done with one pass, not the clouds. But the, but the blue of the sky was done in one pass, okay? Again, nothing real fancy here. It's just a little bit of layering, especially with, especially with regards to the water and uh, the sand and the palm trees. There's a layering process that's important to painting. But all right, before we skip, we jump to the next step, I do want to say hello to a few of you. Shirley Benson in Wyoming. How are you, Shirley? Welcome to the page. Uh, let's see. Sherry says you won't have to go through uh, so many paint plates. That's right. If I, if you keep your paint mixtures concentrated to a small area, you won't have to go as, through as many plates as if you went ahead and started using your entire plate for your mixes. Penny, what's going on, Penny? Penny and uh, Sherry, a couple of the members in my art group here uh, in uh, – Painting with Jesse. I've got a, an art membership group they're a part of. So thank you, ladies, for joining. Uh, love to see people in my group hanging out with us on these lives. Let's see. If I miss one of your comments, folks, please, uh, you know, I do apologize about that. It's not always easy to catch all of the all of the comments. So let me see if I can uh, really quickly before 
I continue here. I want to see if I can catch all of your comments. For some reason, I'm not, I'm only seeing a very select few. Let me see, go back to my dashboard. There we go. I should be able to see them there. So as this is drying, as my background is drying, it's a little easier to, for me to see if I've got good coverage of my paint with my paint or if I've got not so good coverage. And what I mean by that, as it starts to dry, I'm able to better see what areas are a little bit on the lighter side. And I do have some spots that in some cases I would say, you know what, I'm going to redo this. I'm going to not redo it, but I'm going to go ahead and add a second layer of paint over this once it's dry. So for this painting, though, I'm not going to do that. For my sky, the fact that I can see a little bit of the canvas coming through here and there, like I do, like, like on the original, it's real subtle. Um, it's going to actually benefit me because it's going to work in with the clouds and things like that. It's going to look like a sky. Now, oftentimes when, when I have that kind of result, as I mentioned earlier, usually we do two or three uh, layers of paint. I would go through and cover that. I'd go through and do a second layer. Things would get more even and clean and overall nicer. But in this case, we can use that. Okay. Let's see. Joed Mixley. Hello from Mexico. How's it going? Mexicali, of course, part of Mexico or a part of northern Mexico. For those of you that may be familiar, right across the border, not too far from where, where we are here. Maybe they're three hours away, two and a half hours, three hours, I think, from where, where we are in California. So what's happening, happening, Joe Ed? Thank you for joining. Oh, that's okay, Sherry. I, I think I turned off that feature. Don't worry about that too much. What's happening, Tina? Another member. How's it going, Tina? How are you? All right. So our background for this guy is done for now. I'm going to jump over into the water. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch brushes. I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and start this with my number four okay this little flat brush right here a little flat shader a uh, little number four flat technically a flat shader is what it's called but don't worry about that if uh, it's nothing too important number four small little flat brush so what i'm going to do again is i'm going to grab more of my blue and i'm going to bring it down here and i'm going to mix a, a little bit of a darker version than what was in my sky Okay, so a little bit of a darker version to, to just make it stand out from my sky a little bit. Same colors as my sky, blue and, and uh, white. But in this case, there's going to be a little bit more of the blue to make the color a little darker. Not too much darker, though. Okay, give me a second. I, I need to grab a bit more white. And what did I do with my white paint? Uh, I need my glasses. I need my glasses. What did I do with my light? Well, there it is. Right behind my drink cup. Drinking a little bit of a little blueberry and strawberry infused water. These are frozen uh, strawberries, for, uh, frozen blueberries that I throw in my water and it makes a real tasty drink. Anyway, cheers to all of you joining me today. Okay, so mixing. Okay, I'm going to dip my brush once again into my water cup. Just a little bit of water in this case. All I did was dip my brush in there, brought it over and mixed it in. Maybe we'll go a little bit higher, a little bit higher in that value of the, the paint. When you, you can raise or lower, they call it a value, how light or how dark a paint is. So by adding a little bit of white, I make it a little bit lighter. And here we go. First thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to come across and create the bottom edge of my water, Okay, the shoreline. Now, if you notice, it's a little bit curved, has a little bit of an angle, nothing fancy. Okay, it's just a little wider over here, wider than it is over here, a little narrower on this side. Okay, once I have that, I can go ahead and start adding in paint. And I'll start with the background first, the, the furthest part back of my water. And I'm, and I'm just going to take my brush and use the skinny part of the brush. I'm not using the broad part in this case. I'm going to use the skinny part of the brush, and I'm going to run across my canvas like that. Oh, I forgot. I didn't turn my music on. Let's go ahead and do that. If it gets too loud, everybody, let me know. Now, this is a Facebook 
Um, this is Facebook music. Okay, they have a bunch of different options. Try to get a nice kind of slowish, happy sort of painting mood music. We'll see how it turns out. One time I did that and a song or two popped up that were a little bit on the, they weren't family friendly. And I was like, uh oh, I had to turn off the music really quickly. I hope I picked some genres that don't have any, anything too crazy. But what I'm doing is I'm just at, taking my water and I know I said I was using the, bra, the skinny part of the brush. We can alternate a little bit. And I'm just going to take this and run this all the way down. Let me know, folks, if this is too loud. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. I want it in the background. I don't want to overpower my voice. Okay, and I'm just going down. And I, I want there to be subtle little streaks in there, and I'm creating those by using the skinny part of my brush, as I mentioned. As I get down here towards the bottom edge, I can maybe add a little bit more white in here just to lighten things up a little. Okay, so if you notice, I'm only adding it to this small section here of my mix. This is the, all the blue that I mixed for that water, and right here, just, just a little bit. Okay, and I, I could add a little bit more water in there if I want, a little, a little more water to my paint. Okay, just creating a little area down here that's a little lighter. And again, these little streaks that I'm adding are purposeful. Even if they're not super controlled. In other words, I'm not going through there and going, I want, going, I want a light streak right here, and then I want one right here. This is there's a little bit, little bit of a randomness to the process. Okay, so we use that randomness. And here's that, here's a close-up of that water. I'm going to adjust one of my lights over here, and I'm going to knock it out and turn it off. I almost did. There's a close-up right there. Okay. And again, we'll take a moment, give you guys a chance to catch up. Folks, please feel free to ask questions in the comments. If something doesn't, something, you know, didn't make sense, or if you didn't hear something that I said, something didn't quite, you know, you didn't understand something, please post a comment. Ask the question. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Again, this is a very beginner-friendly painting. I want to take. I want us to take our time with it, keeping in mind that everyone's going to have something a little different. Okay. Oh, there are. There is the stars thing at the bottom. Okay. Interesting. Didn't realize that was there. Okay. Will this be recorded? Oh, will this be available on replay? Absolutely, Deb. Absolutely. As soon as this is over. You can, you can watch the recording. As a matter of fact, you can start this right from the beginning right here on either Facebook or on YouTube, okay? Let's see what else do you have, folks. Again, don't be shy. Warrensburg says, Deb, fantastic. In Missouri, awesome. Angie says, I'll be back. Looking forward to finishing class. Sounds good, Angie. When you're ready, come on back. Trying to get to your garden so you can paint, huh, Tina? <laughs> awesome. Oh, your garden water. Got it. Not in this case, Angie. So Angie's asking, do you blow dry the background to let it dry or let it dry? In this case, I'm painting in a very warm uh, garage. My studio is in my garage, so I don't need to let anything dry. As long as I'm jumping around, jumping around. So I went from my, my sky to the water. Uh, that's giving my sky plenty of time to dry. As a matter of fact, it's dry already. Okay, so as long as I've got you know the ability to, to, to do that, uh, we're good. But yeah, that's a great question. Sometimes we do use a blow dryer to help speed up the drying process, especially in the winter. What's happening, Katie? Hot in Texas. I hear that. Thank you, Sherry. I do appreciate that. All right, everybody. So again, please uh, be sure to... Uh, Ask your questions if you have any. I want to make this as easy and as you know clear as possible. Okay, Mary says I have to pause. Do you move my car? Of course, he asked me at the wrong time. 
I, hopefully I won't miss, miss, miss much of the steps. Mary, don't worry. Again, you can back the video up if you need to, okay? All right, here we go. Next step. So for now, that's all we need to do with the water, okay? We're going to come back and add more details to it in a bit. But for now, we're going to come up here and work on the clouds. Clouds, water, palm trees, those are some of the most difficult, for some people, some of the most difficult things as, especially as a beginner to do. And sometimes sometimes even for people that have been painting for a little bit. Okay, do not let yourself feel intimidated. Simply accept that it might be a little difficult. Oh, well, that's okay. You learn through doing, you learn through going for it. Okay, so clouds are coming up, but we're, I think my approach is going to be pretty clear, pretty simple. The clouds that, are good, that we're creating are easy little wispy clouds they don't have a lot of depth to them they do have a little bit of depth but we're not creating these big billowy storm clouds or anything like that they're just little clouds that are floating away off in the distance maybe they're moving from left to right at least that's how i envision it but again nothing crazy nothing fancy about these clouds and you'll see what i'm talking about here in a moment so i am going to be using my number four flat shader once again my number four flat number four flat brush okay i cleaned it up okay so it's this brush right here i cleaned it up okay we're going to be using some white and some blue for this step now some people would grab the white paint directly and start putting in their clouds you can do that okay but watch what i'm going to do right now what i what i want to do is i want to create a color that's a little bit lighter than my background. So it's going to be a blue color. But it's going to be a little lighter than my background. That's what we're going to start with for the first step. So I'm going to take, so here's my, here's my background color. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that color that's still there. It hasn't dried completely on me, so I can use a little, little bit of that. I'm going to bring it over here like this and mix it in with my white paint. Okay, I don't want it too white. Again, I want a bluish color so using the color of my background i'm mixing that in with my white paint again what i'm looking for is a slightly lighter version of my background color okay i'm also going to dip my brush in my water so i dip the brush in that water i bring it over i mix it in again remember what i said about what what water does to your paint it thins it out a little a little bit makes it a bit flowier a little bit more flowy, flowier, flowier, I think is correct. Anyway, here's my paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, again, my number four flat shader. Okay? Number four flat. It makes a little bit more blue in here. I made it a little bit too bright. I don't want too bright. I want a little bit lighter than the original color. Okay? And I, I, I know when I... As soon as I put the paint on the canvas, that's when you really know for sure if you've got the right color. Okay, and look at this. Look at the difference. Real subtle difference. Okay, not much. This is the base. And all I'm doing with my flat, sh my flat brush here is I'm coming up and I'm just pressing, doing little smudges almost. I'm building up the background of my clouds. And this might be a little too, uh, uh, too close to the original color. But that's okay. We'll start with this and we'll, we'll increase the brightness level in a little bit. But what I'm doing is I'm creating the general shape. For example, that big cloud back there, just the general shape of that cloud. And I'm dabbing and sometimes I use the skinny part of the brush and I just pull. Okay. And sometimes I'll, I'll wiggle the brush around like this in little tiny circles. Okay, I want a little too, too much... Uh, too much, uh, too close to the original. So I'm adding a little bit more white in here now, just a little bit, a little more water. I'm just dipping my brush in that water. My water kept sitting right behind my canvas. So, okay, and here we go again. Should be a little lighter. There we go. I left the original cloud that I did back there. But I can kind of come over and paint over it a little bit. Try to we'll see. So look what I'm doing with my brush, where I'm holding it, further towards the back. This is a very loose style of painting. I don't need to get super uh, precise. 
and I'm dabbing and I'm pulling in some cases like this. Pull a little bit. I bring it, I come down here a little. If this is in, in any way, if you're watching, you're not, you haven't started your clouds yet, yet, you can practice, maybe paint on a piece of scratch canvas or a piece of paper. If you have any drawing paper, if you've got any like canvas paper, you can practice before painting on your actual painting. Again, all I'm doing is just dabbing around with the brush. I turn it, I pull a little bit, and this is really subtle right now. Yeah, I almost went too light with that part of my uh, cloud too. And again, that's okay, not, not anything crazy. We just add a little, more, a little bit more white paint to the mixture. Okay, if we need to go lighter. Now, if you, what you wanna see is a, again, a bit of a difference. There we go. Yeah, that's a little more like it. There we go. I'm pulling. There's another little cloud. I'm going to angle them a little bit. I'm actually painting them a little too straight. I want to angle them a little bit more. So slightly at an angle. Watch my brush, what I'm doing with my brush. Just a little bit, not too much. I'm building my clouds kind of at an angle like this. You can have yours nice and straight if you want. Nice and horizontal, nice and level. But again, I'm just going to go back up here to these other cl the clouds that I put in earlier. I'm going to make this a little larger. Again, watch how I'm manipulating the brush. I press down. Let me give you a close-up. Okay, let me see if I can give you a little close-up. Sometimes I'm using mostly the tip of the brush, where I'm kind of like this. Okay, and then other times I begin to press a little harder. We're going to work our clouds in in layers. Okay, a little layer process, layering process. So again, it will make sense as we go along. Right? You don't have clouds that are all even the same brightness or the same white. Just mixing a little bit more paint. Again, I want to keep about the same, still working with the same value, the same brightness as that last uh, coat that I was adding. This is all still part of the beginning stages of our clouds. You don't want it, you don't want huge or really bright contrast right now. I can also take my finger if I go too hard, uh, I spread too much paint on there, too thick. I can take my finger and just use it to spread my paint across. I can also take a paper towel, kind of do this, and just lightly press on this and. Uh, spread the paint across. Again, what you want to have at this stage is a very, very subtle cloud, uh, very subtle clouds, depending on how many you've got. Right now, this in this stage, everything is about the same value in brightness. Okay, I've got a little cloud right here. And this is a light touch. It's a really light touch that I'm using. Maybe we've got another one right here. And maybe I'll spread the paint a little bit like this. Let's see, I feel like I need to have, I know we're gonna have some palm trees over here. They're gonna cover up most of this, at least on this part, whatever I have over here is gonna get slightly covered up. So keeping that in mind, I don't spend too much time over here. Although it is pretty cool to see some of those clouds peeking out behind the palm trees, okay? Again, folks, nice and slow. Don't stress out. If you're watching, sometimes that's the best thing to do is just watch and then attempt it afterwards. And I'm layering a little bit on top of the originals just here and there, overlapping, okay? Look at that all with the same value, okay, all of it with the same value of paint. There are going to be brighter parts in a little bit. We're gonna add a bit more brightness, a little bit more white, okay? So let's see, what else do we got, folks? Anybody Anybody uh, have any questions? Maureen says, how long will this lesson be available? I plan on leaving it up indefinitely. 
Maureen. So whenever you're ready, come on back and paint. Just don't don't wait too long. You'll probably forget. <laughs> okay, so so it'll be up on the painting with Jesse Page for quite some time on the YouTube channel as well. So please, you know, come on and uh, jump on and paint when you're ready. Okay. From time to time, it's a good idea to take a little step back and look to see what you've got. I feel like I need to add a little bit more of this first layer of clouds over to this side. Yeah, I'll start working a little faster now since I think probably most of you got the gist of what's going on. But we'll come back to these clouds here in a second. We're not, we're not done with these clouds. We're going to finish on this step before we go back to work into that water, because we are going to go back to that, to the water here in just a little bit. So, and then I'm gonna, here's, here's the other thing I'm going to do. Off in the distance, little tiny lines of, you know, maybe little tiny clouds that have dissipated. Okay, so this, that's gonna be a little hard to detect, but it's just little tiny, just a couple of them here or there. Let's see, I feel like I need to add a little more here. We have a little island off in the distance that we'll be adding tomorrow. Don't forget part two is tomorrow, okay? Also, everyone, uh, I did a put a little post up earlier today on the painting with Jesse Page as to what you would like to see uh, next. I'd like to do another workshop this month here in the group in the painting with Jesse group. So please give me your suggestions. Go on to that and uh, let me know what you'd like to paint. Also, you can put it here in the comments. Okay, so please uh, let me know what you would like to paint. Maybe uh, something like uh, Christmas in July or Halloween in July. I'm a big Halloween fan, a big Christmas fan too, but put a picture suggestions up, whatever you'd like to see. All right, I grabbed a little bit of white now. Okay, here I came over and grabbed some white okay now i don't want this to be too bright but i am so i'm not grabbing a lot of thick white paint i picked up just white with my brush i didn't clean it or anything i didn't need to clean it and then i'm just kind of wiping some of that extra white off it on the on the plate i want some pure white on here and what i'm going to do is up here upwards on the tops of these clouds i'm start i start to add this bright part of the like a bright edge I'm not going to cover up the entire cloud, so I'm not going to go and cover everything up here. I'm being selective. It's mainly towards the top of my cloud. And then as I come closer to the bottom, I can just use my finger or a paper towel and lightly, kind of like this, just lightly pull. And I'm, and I'm just pulling here towards the bottom. Okay, so look what that did. That little cloud that's varying in value from a lighter down here towards the base and it gets brighter towards the top. Now, not every cloud is gonna be exactly like that, but that's kind of a general, a little bit of a general idea as to how these clouds are being created. Maybe here, again, watch how I'm holding my brush, okay? And that cloud maybe continues this way like this. Okay, kind of like that. I can pull a little bit with the brush itself. I just kind of do a little bit like that. I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. Okay, for this step, I also didn't add any water to my paint. Okay, it is such that for my paint, it's flowy enough where I don't have to add any water, but I also don't want a lot of paint to go on the canvas just yet. And if I add water to it, it's going to be it's going to be easier for that paint to stick to the canvas, which I, which I want some, but not too much paint to, to stick to that canvas. I know that might have sounded a little bit, <laughs> a little convoluted the way I explained it, but hopefully that made sense to you. But anyway, here's another one. Okay, here we go. Maybe this one has a little bit, this one's this white goes all the way to the bottom. Okay, we pull a little bit like this. Maybe we've got a little wispy one back there that has a little color. Okay, watch my brush. Again, not a lot of paint on here. 
And not every single cloud is going to have this. Some of these clouds back there are going to stay back there. They're going to stay light. And here I am just pulling, pulling. You're going to want to experiment. You're going to want to experiment with paint when you're painting, when you're learning to paint. Even when you've been painting a while, some people are afraid to experiment because they don't want to mess up. They don't want to waste time. They don't want to waste materials. But experimentation is where I personally learned the most. It's where most people, I think, learn the most beyond following along with somebody like myself. Of course, you learn quite a bit, but when you go out and start experimenting, it can be a lot of fun and you will definitely teach yourself some stuff because you learn what works and what doesn't. So you don't want to be afraid to go out and experiment. And if something doesn't quite, maybe you imagine something in your head, hmm, I'd like to paint this or I'd like to paint that. And this is how I think the approach would be. You just go for it. Okay, you just go for it. Start. If it doesn't turn out right, if it doesn't look good, okay, so you learn what not to do. Okay, it's, it's actually as simple as that. You learn that that didn't work, and then you go, okay, well, what can work? You try a different way. You try a different brush. Okay, turning up my music a little bit. So, again, experimentation is a big part of any artistic endeavor. So if, you're, if you're first starting off, not sure what's happening to my music. There we go. Here we go. So I'm going to continue here on these clouds for a bit. Now I went ahead and for variation, I went ahead and added a bit of water to my, just my white paint. Now again, I didn't clean the brush. So there's a little tiny bit of that blue there or the lighter blue that I was using originally. And that's okay. What is this going to do? Well, we're going to find out. Let's see, I'm going to come and I'm going to go maybe, let's see, I think I need another cloud right here. Just a little billowy one. The water makes it a little bit transparent. So it's not too intense. Okay, where else? Where else? Maybe I'll come up here. You know what? I'm going to add a little bit more intensity to a couple of these lighter clouds, these clouds towards the top. Let me grab a bit more white. Just a couple of spots where there's more intensity, more white. Hi, Kinkini. How are you? Been a little while since I've seen you on here. Hope you're enjoying the, the session. Okay, here we go. Just picked up some white in this case, just white. I put white right there on my plate, replenished my white supply on my palette, and I dipped my brush right into it. And I'm going to go, all right, right in here, a little bit brighter. Yeah, but not too much, not too much. Don't want to overpower the other clouds too much. And then maybe over here. You notice I don't have any shadows. Maybe a little tiny bit if you want to consider those shadows. I don't have many. I don't have input shadows in my painting because I didn't. I wanted to keep things... A little bit on the on the on the easier side. That little cloud also got a little extra white paint, so it stands out a little for, a little more than the others. Maybe right in here a little bit. We're almost done with these clouds. But the other thing could also be that maybe the sun is directly above everything, uh, and so you don't see much of the shadows. I'm using the number four. Flat brush, can for the for the brush. Okay, real basic. Let me show you guys a close up. Now there are other brushes that can be used for clouds. Some people like to use round brushes. Some people like to use mop brushes. There's lots of options out there. So my little flat number four. Okay. Again, nothing fancy. Nice and easy. Now. As far as my clouds, for now, that's it. I'm good with those clouds. Keeping in mind, we're going to have a couple of palm trees right here, right? They're going to cover up. They're going to break the, uh, they're going to break kind of the, if you consider your sky being a little bit monotonous, 
they're gonna these palm trees are gonna remove focus from that background. So as soon as you put those palm trees in there, and again, we're doing that tomorrow, this is all going to fade further into the background. Right now, the clouds may look a little prominent, you know, because of the fact that it's the only thing on the canvas other than the water. Okay, so, but keeping in mind, those palm trees go up, the clouds will lose prominence, they'll get pushed further to the back. And then, however, my point is this, you can still go back and add more touches to your clouds if you feel like you need to. Okay, so tomorrow we will have an opportunity to do that some more. You could use a filbert. Filbert's a good brush to use for clouds. Um, also, you know, if you have an old beat up brush where maybe the bristles start to kind of open up a little, those are also good because it gives you a little bit more randomness, a little more surface area to work with on your brush. So there are options out there. Again, I want to keep things nice and easy. Let's see. Sherry says, I've got clouds. I do two paintings and I, and I see a huge difference in my technique with time. This time, these are better. Fantastic, Sherry. That's it. It takes time, everyone. It takes a little time to build up those, those skills. Okay? So, in a moment, we're going to get back into that water. We're probably about, about 20, 30 minutes from being done with today's session. How much time have we been? Now, we didn't start painting right, right from the beginning. But see if I can see if Facebook will tell me how much time we've been. Uh, usually my stream yard tells me. It's not telling me. Huh. All right. All right. It's okay. Well, we started it. We started right about at three. I talked for about 10 minutes or so. So we've been painting for about 45 minutes ish. Folks, please don't forget to like this video. If you're watching, please like it or put a little heart on it, whatever. It helps Facebook to show it to other people. The more interaction there is on the video, the more chances other people that are looking for stuff like this will get this popping up on their feed. But there's, you know, there has to be interaction for Facebook to go, hey, this is worthwhile sharing with others. So please, if you can do me a favor, please like the video. Here, I'll, I'll give you guys, oh no, it's not letting me do it. Oh no, I was gonna give you a bunch of likes and loves to everybody. Uh, why doesn't, Facebook is so odd sometimes. Anyway, but please, if you could like it, comment, say hello, just say, hey Jesse, how's it going? That would be awesome. Thank you, Penny. Somebody's asking me about the beginning of the video. So it, so in this case, I've used, so this in this case, I'm using uh, primary blue and then um, so primary blue, primary blue for both, okay, sky and the water. Primary blue is what I'm using. Primary blue with some white, white primary blue with some white for the water as well. But all right, here we go, folks. Same little brush. Actually, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm switching over. Yeah, we're going to start it with the flat brush. Once again, number four, flat. We're going to start to add a little bit of detail to the water. There is just I want to point out though, there isn't a whole lot of difference from what I have here to what I've got over here. It's a little bit more subtle, perhaps, but there isn't a whole lot of difference. What I'm going to do, number four, flat brush. I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to take some white. Is the music distracting? Can you hear it? Is it too loud? Is it okay? Let me know in the comments. Is it a good addition? I don't know. I suppose we'll get different feedback. But let me know, folks. Don't be shy. Let me know. Yay or nay on the music. All right. So I've got a blue here that's going to be a little darker than the original background. A little bit. I'm also going to dip my brush in my water. I'm just dipping the brush a tiny bit. I'll mix it in here. I'll grab a little bit more blue. Why not? Music is fine, says Kinkini. Awesome. And then somebody says, Sherry says it's a little distracting and kind of loud. Okay. Let me bring it down a little bit. I like the music, says Alice. All right, we're, we're going to find a happy medium somewhere. So a little lower. All right, here we go. So right here towards the back. If you notice on the original, it's a little darker back in the distance and it gets a little lighter as we move forward. 
Okay, we're creating this darker valued water. All I did was add in a bit more blue to my mixture to make it a little darker. And I'm using my, my brush here sideways. So I'm painting with the skinny part. And I'm just moving back and forth. Okay. And if you notice, there are little tiny lines, or it might be a little hard to tell, but little tiny lines that are naturally being created as I run that brush across the canvas. What's happening is I'm, is I'm trying to keep from having a perfectly even brush stroke throughout. As I'm going, there's some overlap. There's a little less. As I'm moving across like this, sometimes I overlap the previous line. So I'll, so I'll go like this. It's like mowing the lawn in a sense. And here, you know, you mow your lawn, you go, you go and you come back, but you're doing this, this kind of little step where you're trying to get a nice, even uh, lawn. In this case, I'm doing this. Here's my lawnmower going across. Instead of jumping to my edge, I can jump a little further across. So I'm going to have a little tiny bit of a gap. And then as I move across, I can kind of go back in and touch the edge and then come back a little bit. It's really subtle, but those little tiny changes create little differences in color in that, in that, in that uh, layer of paint, which we use to create those little soft waves off in the distance. We're already helping create those in a very subtle fashion. So a little bit more water in here, maybe a little, little tiny bit of white. And here we go. Again, skinny part of my brush. So I don't have to have a perfectly level brush stroke. And not every time do I need to go completely across. I can start, stop, leave a little gap, move up a little bit. This is just one way to create water. And this is a little peaceful setting, so there's not a lot of waves or anything like that. <laughs> you just cut your grass today, Penny, so that means you're ready to go. You're warmed up for this painting. <laughs> That's what that means. All right. Moving across. Nice and easy. Over towards this edge, maybe I'm going to bring this blue a little further down. Then over on this side. Okay, so here's what we got. A little close up. Here we go. Okay, nothing fancy. Now, same brush, same paint. I'll just bring a little bit up. I'm going to come down a little. Just create a couple little dark streaks in here. Just a little bit. Awesome, Kinkini. Your morning cup of coffee. That's right. You're in Australia, right? Is that right, Kinkini? You're out in Australia, so it's like, Early in the morning, real early in the morning. I don't remember what the time difference is, but I know you guys are, you know, definitely different time zone. Okay. Now, a little bit of water, a little bit, sorry, a little bit of white paint right in here with this blue. A tiny, 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 tiny touch of green. Now, this green's kind of dry, so I'm going to poke through that surface a little bit. That's too much green, so we're going to bring it really light. We want a really, really just a tiny touch of green, so a little more blue in there. A little bit of water, touching that, just touching the surface of the water with my brush. Okay, and here we go. I'm going to skip all this in here for a little bit, right in this area here, where we've got this breaking little wave. I'm adding this kind of aqua color. It's a blue green, real pretty, almost like a sea foam green. Yeah, bring this maybe across like that. Maybe we'll go a little higher there, a little higher up or further back into that water. Okay, need a little, little bit more white. 
7 a.m. In, per in Perth, Australia. Sounds perfect for a cup of coffee. A little, a little more white. Just creating more of that same mixture, everybody. That little seafoam green that I was just painting. And this little band of color doesn't have to be too broad. Tipping my water, my brush in that water to make the paint a little bit more translucent, a little bit more flowy. And there we go. Okay. Now. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of white paint. Kind of thick. Actually, now I'm going to switch brushes. My number two little flat brush. I want, I want to be able to make smaller details in here. Little tiny flat brush. Scoop up just white paint. Nice and thick. I'm going to create this little edge. The top edge of that wave that's cresting. The little that foam. That churn that's creating right above here. I'm just going to... Again, watch what I'm doing with the brush. Now, this is a long-handled brush, okay? Preferably for being this close, and I'm not that close, but these are kind of nice when you're standing up, painting from a bit of a different distance. This here, though, is a nice brush. Look where I'm holding it further back. It's nice and loose. I just, I'm just pushing down into the canvas a bit. I'm going to grab it a little bit closer because I want to give you guys a close-up now. So I just switch my grip on the brush simply because I'm going to come close. All I'm doing is creating a little broken edge. Right above where I created that seafoam green, right where that edge of the seafoam green is. Come across. This is where it's going to be the thickest. And then it gets a little smaller, a little skinnier. Like this, over across, and maybe over here somewhere, kind of like that. A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, our painting starts to make sense. It starts to look like something, but it's always about layering, creating layer on top of layer until you get where you want to go. The more detailed the painting, the more uh, the more elements you have, the more time you're going to take. You have to have a little patience or a lot of patience. Depends on the painting. Some of you like to stick to very simple, small paintings because maybe you lack patience and that's perfectly fine. Everyone has a different style. Everyone has a different approach. Everyone has a preference to the types of paintings that they like to make. And it's all perfectly fine. Okay, but there we go. A little closer. Okay, I'm going to take this white paint. I'm not going to make it thick like I had it over here. I'm just going to, I'm going to brush it so it's nice and thin. I'm going to pull it here on the edge of the shore. I'm going to just add a little detail. So again, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pulling the paint so it stays nice and thin. Right along that edge, I know this is going to have, this is going to have sand. So we don't want to go too far down because we're going to end up covering it, and covering it when we do the sand anyway. So but just along the edge a little bit. And maybe like in here, we come up, come back into the water a little bit, we come down in a bit. Gentle, easy, skinny. holding the brush a little closer because this is requiring detail also I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing small details tight details require a tighter grip okay. Yeah. 
There's a little bit of paint left on my brush. I'm going to take it and see if I can get a light, a little highlight out of here. Let me dip my brush in my water. So I dip that brush in the water and just blend that water and the paint in on the brush on the plate here. Make it nice and thin. And while I'm here, I'm just going to add little tiny glimpses of light reflecting in the water. Maybe there's a little bit of a cresting waves. Real tiny, real subtle. All I'm doing. Thank you, Penny, and I love yours, Penny, and I love yours. Okay, so again, folks, taking your time. What you what you also want to be doing is scoot back. I, I keep looking down so I don't knock my tripod over uh, with my chair. So you want to take a step back. Oftentimes what helps is even look away for a little bit, you know, take a little walk to the kitchen, go get yourself a drink, maybe, uh, you know, whatever, a little snack, come back, look at it again and go, okay, what do I got? What's, you know, what's, what's, what doesn't look right? What looks great? Do I need to make any adjustments by refreshing your, your vision a little, little bit by doing that? You come back and you go, okay. It's easier to see spot differences or changes or things that maybe you want to address before you go too far into a painting and then realizing really deep into the painting that there's some difference that is going to require a lot of work to change it to the way you need it to go. So make sure that you're taking some time, take a little step back, look at your piece from a distance and then go, okay, all right, things are looking good. You want to do assessment checks. Okay. With that being said, I need to make an assessment check on my thirst. Found it a little bit. A little, I'm a little thirsty. Don't want to dehyd get dehydrated. So here we go. Got a, look up, got a couple little berries with that drink. Okay. So what else? What else do we got? I'm going to mix a little bit of my blue. Okay, same little brush right now. With a little bit of my green. Got to mix them together. A nice dark kind of aqua color. Okay, in this case, it's a little darker than the stuff we've been working with. I don't need too much. So I'm pressing that brush against the plate. Okay, making that edge nice and skinny. I press the brush like this, and it compresses those uh, bristles together. I'm actually going to add a little tiny bit of water to it, just a little bit just to make it easier for that paint to stick to the canvas. What I'm gonna do is right here along the edge of my crest, I'm gonna to start to drop in a little bit of color. Now I'll go back to that crest, the foamy white stuff, and add more white to it to brighten it up a little more, make it more prominent. But right here, this is right under that crest. Okay, and some of it's gonna be maybe a little more blue, some of it's gonna be a little more green, it's okay. As long as you've got a nice little contrast in here, this helps create that, that um, depth or dimension that starts to make this look like a wave. Now, you don't want this edge to be flat. You, want, you don't want a flat, straight edge across there. You want there to be some variation. So here I kind of brought the color up a little bit, then it comes back down, goes up, right? As that wave is moving, it's not flat. It's, it's got, it's got that curl on top, but below that, depending on where the foam is, it has an edge. It does all kinds of stuff. And so you want to make sure your this color that you're adding is following that a little bit. Now, this is a small wave. It's nothing crazy. It's not, <clears throat> you don't need anything that needs a, uh, too much detail, but you do want to, you want to add some of this now. You know, again, I'll, I'll kind of, You want some variation in there. Variation is the name of the game. OK, 
Okay, here we go. A little bit over here, and I, I watered this down a bit. I added by adding a bit of water to my brush and dipping it into my paint. So here's what I did. I just touched the water, the surface of the water in my water cup, bring that over. Again, what that does, one of the things that it does is it thins the paint out. So it makes it a little bit more translucent. So it's not as intense, even though it's the same color that I just used up there, it, loose, it re reduces some of the intensity by a simple little trick like adding water. I'm going to come across here. This is a bit random, everyone. Yours is going to look a little different. Okay, maybe I'm going to grab a little bit more blue now and throw it in. We don't want it all of the same even color. That, like, like if, we, if we do it with all the same color, it's not going to look quite right. We want some variation in this. So now I'm grabbing a little bit of white. Putting it in here with the blue and the green. And then let's see. Maybe, maybe over here. And it's just little touches, little touches here, little touches there. Here. Maybe here. Again, you want to avoid using the same color everywhere. You want there to be variation. What I mean is the color that I mixed for in here, I varied it by adding a little bit more blue for some spots, a little more water for some spots, a little bit more uh, white for other other parts if it's all one color it tends to look unnatural especially for something like water when you ever, if you ever look at water especially moving water like the ocean right when you're at the shore you see all sorts of different little colors in it. sometimes sometimes you'll see more green more blue some parts are more are more transparent uh, than others right more it's more see-through Maybe there's seaweed that's changing the color a little bit. So it just really does depend a lot on different factors. But the point is you want variation in that water. Okay, variation in color. Here we go back to my foam, right here where the water's breaking. A little bit more. Maybe it comes down a little. Oops, I brought that down a little too low. I think it still works. Maybe we'll use our finger here to bring that up. There we go. But maybe here. Really, really light touch. Okay, now I'm going to take my white paint here, I'm gonna create a really light version of this color. So it's a really, really light foamy green once again. I'll dip my brush in my water. We're almost done, everyone. We're almost done with today's session. So hang in there if you're, you know, you're kind of getting a little paint fatigue. It does happen. Or you can stop painting and then continue later on when you're a little refreshed. Up to you. But I would say continue watching. Don't go away. You'll, you'll learn some stuff just by watching. Okay. A little close up now. Tomorrow when we – now, we're not done just yet. I'm just talking about tomorrow, what to expect for tomorrow. We will come back and add some touches to the water as needed. Once we have our beach in place, once we have the palm trees and the other elements, we can go um, see we – can, we can add other touches – to different parts of the water. Okay, just look at the comments really quickly to see if anybody, if I've missed any questions or comments, okay? Oops, a little too far there, go back up. All right, now, okay, I think I need to address, this looks a little too flat, so I'm gonna take, and go back to my number four brush Where'd you go? Right there. Okay, I'm going to mix some more of my paint. So with some white, a little bit of blue, on a nice light 
color in here. Maybe I'll take a little bit of green, throw it in there. Okay, a little bit of water. Once again, I touched the surface of the water just a little bit. I don't want this too intense, so I want to remove some of that paint. You can always add more paint to the brush if we need it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go. There, what this is doing is it's creating that variation that I, that I was mentioning. This color is a little different than anything that's on this area, so it creates a little bit of variation, a little bit more of a natural feel to everything. And I'll take a little bit more blue to continue with that thought. I'll throw in a little bit more blue in here for added variation, and I'm going to come in here one more time. Just pick some spots. I feel like it needs to be a little bit darker, so pick up some of that color. Let's see, a bit of the green, a bit more blue, a bit of white, and then here we go. Need a little bit more of the blue, just a little bit more. Sometimes it takes a bit to catch the right color. You have to kind of play with it till it feels right. You don't always know until you've started applying the paint onto the canvas. It gets easier with time picking your colors. It starts becoming second nature. All right. Okay, I'm gonna grab a bit more blue now. I'm gonna throw it in here. And this is probably our last, our last, um, Step four today. A little bit of water too, just dip my brush in there. And I'm gonna take this and just lightly pick some spots in here. Okay. But all right, let's give you all a little close up. Okay. What's up? Pretty billowy, billowy clouds up in that sky, and there's our water. Okay. Again, we'll add more touches. We'll add more. There's just little subtle changes that we might do tomorrow, depending on how everything looks put together. Okay, so let's see. What else do we have, everyone? Okay, so. That is it for today. Okay, our little session for today. That, that, is, that is a good place to stop at. Now, tomorrow we're going to go ahead and we'll probably start with the, not probably, we will. We'll start with the beach. We'll actually assess first. We'll kind of do a quick assessment just to make sure that everything still looks good, right? Again, once you've looked at something uh, for a while, it's a little hard to look at any glaring things that uh, aren't so glaring. So, you know, little things that maybe you can't see quite well and you can't pick up on by coming back and looking at it again, you have a better chance of seeing them. So tomorrow we'll do a quick assessment before we start, make any changes that we might need to make first. I don't think we'll need anything. It looks pretty close, but we'll see. And then we'll jump right in and start doing the beach, painting in the colors for the beach, uh, we'll, we'll add our palm trees, starting with the, with the uh, trunks, and we'll add the foliage on top, we'll add the foliage down on the ground. This is going to take some more time to flesh out, okay? We're going to go slowly through that, making sure that, it, that you all understand what we're talking about and how to do it. There's a variation of colors in there to build up there as well, so, okay? But anyway... I want to thank all of you for joining me today. Again, this has been recorded. If you didn't get a chance to join in with the live stream, you can watch it immediately after the session is done with. Jump right up to the live tab at the top of the Painting with Jesse page. It's easier to find it on a laptop or a computer as opposed to your phone because you'll see the live tab at the top. Click on that. You'll, you'll see this video sitting at the top waiting for you to come over and watch it. Okay? So... Please do not forget tomorrow, 3 p.m., same time as, you know, as today. Uh, so 
come back and join me. I really hope to see everyone back here. And again, thank you so much for joining me. Debbie Norman says, thank you from North Carolina. Thank you to you, to you. Bernadette Calhoun says, thank you. Bernadette, thank you for joining. I really appreciate all of you. Anne Marie says, thank you. Can't wait for tomorrow. Have a good night. You too, Anne Marie. Thank you again so much. Everyone, please do not forget to hit the like button for this. Again, it helps spread the word through Facebook. Facebook just, that's the way Facebook works. Also, if you would like uh, to share this with anyone, you can hit the share button, share it on your own Facebook profile, your page, your, your feed. You can uh, send it by messenger to your friends, invite friends or family to come and paint with you. Okay. Also, if you are not on the Painting with Jesse email list, there's a link to it in the description of this video. Click on that, get on the list so that you do not miss out on any of the fun that we have here on the page. Last thing, last thing. If you have not yet, please go to the main Painting with Jesse feed and give me your suggestion for what you want to see next. I'm having, I'm going to be adding another uh, workshop to the end of the month. So a couple of weeks and uh, or so, and I want to see what it is that you guys want to paint. Okay. Give me some ideas as to themes that you'd like to see. So uh, there is a post that I made about that earlier today. Anyway, my voice is starting to get tired. So I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.